Welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Today, we're talking about waterproofing coax. What is it and why is it important? Before we get into that, I wanna let you know my channel is supported by Ham Radio Prep. Are you studying for your ham radio license? Maybe you wanna get that general or that extra class ticket. Check out hamradioprep.com. It's who I use for all my study materials and you should too. Now, this may seem like Ham Radio 101 to some of you and it is, but a lot of hams don't realize that you can't just use a coax like this that you buy off the shelf or get from a friend and expect it to be in service for very long if you're not taking steps to make it more water resistant as well as UV resistant. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks and show you how you need to wrap this coax to make sure that no water gets in here. Let's first talk about how this actually happens. Now, here's a simple piece of coax with a PL259 and water intrusion, as it's called, usually happens right here around the barrel connector. It gets in on either side, seeps down to the coax, and once that water gets inside and it starts affecting the dielectric, or it gets in and starts corroding away the copper at the center conductor, your coax is as good as junk and it's time to throw it away. That's why this is so important. Other videos, I talk about the importance of buying good coax. If you're gonna invest in good coax, like you should, you really wanna protect that investment. And that's where making your coax water resistant as well as UV resistant is so, so important. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this, what to use, what to buy, and it's at your local hardware store and it doesn't cost a ton of money. All right, let's take a look. So what are you gonna to need to actually waterproof your coax? Well, the first thing is the most important one. It's what keeps the moisture out. And that is a product called Temflex. Uh, Temflex, T-E-M-F-L-E-X 2155. It is a 3M product. You can also order it online. And when you get it, it looks like a big elastic black rubber band. And that's what it is. It's self-adhesive only to itself. Uh, and it's very, very elastic. Uh, you'll see how to put this on in a second. If you're curious what the package looks like, uh, this is what it looks like if you see it on the shelf at the store. The other part to this is gonna be Scotch Super 88 electrical tape. Simple electrical tape. But why this? This has nothing to do with moisture. This has to do with UV protection. You know, your antenna and your coax system is not only battling what's going on from a moisture perspective, uh, the UV rays from the sun, especially if you live at a high elevation like I used to in Colorado, or if you're down further south where the sun's stronger, UV rays are super important. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're protecting your antenna system against that because that's also gonna be affecting your antenna over the long run. Let's go ahead and use this uh, N-Fed antenna transformer with an SO239 to show you exactly how to do this in theory uh, so you can learn how to protect your coax at home. Let's check it out. We have everything we're gonna need for this demonstration. We have our Chameleon N-Fed antenna here and our SO239 connection, our Temflex tape and our electrical tape. So uh, first things first, let's take a look at this coax. Now, one thing I wanna point out is even if you have some heat shrink here on your coax, don't think that that is then the answer for waterproofing. You're still gonna to wanna to do this process. Just know that you're, you don't wanna stop there. As you're screwing this in, uh, one thing also to keep in mind is that if you can go out and find yourself some dielectric grease, I recommend you get some. Dielectric grease is a silicone product. Just put it on the threads very lightly and it's gonna be a two-fold thing for you. It's gonna save you a lot of time. It's gonna be anti-corrosion, so you can actually get your coax back off in the future, uh, and also act as another layer to prevent moisture and the off chance that moisture gets into your coax. So go ahead and screw it on nice and tight. Now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and get us some Temflex tape here. There we go, get off a good section. Keep in mind that you don't need to actually measure out the total length of this for what you're actually gonna need in the coax. The reason for that is it's very, very elastic and stretchy. So uh, just keep that in mind. You probably need maybe eight, 10, 12 inches, something like that. So I wanna make sure that I'm uh, taking care of this coax down here with this heat shrink. So you're gonna to wanna to start and go ahead and it's self-adhesive again to the tape itself. So there is no stickiness like this. It'll just keep feeling like, where is this adhesive? It's adhesive to itself. So I'm gonna go from the bottom up and I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna make sure we're covering this bottom portion and I'm gonna start it just like this and I wanna get one other really good tight turn and now I'm gonna start working my way up. As I work my way up, what I'm looking at is making sure that I'm doing some good overlapping, getting some tension into it, making it nice and tight because again, that tension is what's really gonna seal 
against that coax and keep that water out. So I'm working my way up, overlapping about half the last turn every time I move up. Again, working my way up closer to the barrel connector here. All right, we're getting close here. Come in one more time. There we go. All right, we're at the bottom of the barrel connector. This is a very important part to get right, get it nice and tight. There we go. All right, we're up and over the barrel now, coming across, and we're gonna take it all the way above the connector, all the way to the threads on the SO239. Let's just try to get one more turn out of this here on the bottom. Gotta move my hands here. So one more pull through the bottom of the coax here. There we go. All right, now that we have it, let's go ahead and just make sure we're covering up those threads all the way to the top. All right, so there we have it. From the bottom up, sealing as we go up, all the way to the threads past the top of the barrel connector. Now, the other part to this is gonna be doing the same exact thing, but this time with electrical tape. Again, this has nothing to do with moisture. This has everything to do with UV protection. Because again, UV is also gonna eat at things and cause you a ton of headache as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing here again. This is not as critical to be worrying about how tight you're getting it. This really is just another barrier that's really focused on uh, just protecting from the sun's rays. So I'm not gonna be as cautious in terms of how my overlaps are looking. All right, now that I just kind of messed it up, I'm gonna pull out about what I'm gonna need here to finish it off. So again, this really isn't about water. This is just about the sun because UV rays are gonna eat through your coax and cause problems, cause it to crack and break. It's gonna cause problems with your rope if you have a dipole antenna. So you just wanna make sure you have tape that you know is gonna be UV resistant, which the Scotch Super 88 is. So there we go. So we have our uh, Temflex underneath. On top, we have a nice spiral of a, uh, you know electrical tape that's gonna help with the UV protection, which is what we want. And now from here, we're ready to put this thing in the air. This kind of protection is gonna keep your coax from going bunk uh, for years and years and years and years. Because if you don't do this, you could put up your antenna and within a year or two or three, all of a sudden now you have a problem. And just keep in mind also, if you have water intrusion in your coax, you may not even realize it because it's not always gonna show up as an SWR problem. What you really wanna do is measure your cable for loss. Uh, of actual power. That's probably the best test to see if you have water intrusions problems because VWSR could go wonky if you have water in here, but not always. So the best way to do it is to measure with a dummy load uh, the power loss through your cable. But still, sweeping it for SWR is just fine as well because you may find other problems that you didn't know you had. So that's it. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. It's gonna help share it to other hams that have the same quandary. Uh, and if you haven't, subscribe for more radio videos in the future. I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you again next time.